Like everyone these days, BMW is building crossovers, though they call them SAVs, or Sport Activity Vehicles. This is the new second-generation X3. It's now roomier, better looking, and less expensive than the first one. Always a winning combination. The big kahuna in this class is the Lexus RX, but none in this segment are exactly cheap. That's why the Y shopper will also be test driving the Mercedes-Benz GLK, Volvo XC60, Audi Q5, and Cadillac SRX. My tester has the smaller of the two available engines, an inline six with 240 horsepower. X-Drive, or all-wheel drive to you and me, is standard on X3. So is an eight, yes, eight-speed automatic transmission. Enjoy driving? Then X3 will be high on your list. Zero to 60 comes up quick, just under seven seconds. And remember, this is the smaller engine. It's very nimble on its feet, expected from a BMW. The EPA rates fuel economy at 19 city, 25 highway. Ride quality is the coveted, firm yet comfortable dynamic. Does it lean and roll in corners? No. Good road feel? Yes. Quiet on road trips? About average. Brakes? Excellent, with good modulation. Most X3 buyers will seldom venture off-road, but even on wet, rainy streets, X-Drive will be appreciated. A brave few will venture off onto stuff like this where they should find no problems. If you were blindfolded and saw this when it was removed, you'd know instantly you were being kidnapped in a BMW. There's the usual clean, purposeful gauges, high quality materials with a conservative design, and a sound system that, with a slight brush, previews the radio presets. The large LCD screen is crisp and clear. The same can't always be said about the iDrive user interface, but it has been improved. Heated steering wheels are terrific. The X3 is fairly spacious back here. Two passengers will be very comfortable. Three average size adults should be just fine. Those in the middle will have to straddle the drive shaft tunnel. There's lots of places to store stuff and electronics can be charged. Gripes? Well, the seats don't slide fore and aft back here. I continue to find BMW's transmission joystick less than elegant in operation. And the radar screen pattern of the rear window defroster is surprisingly distracting. People buy these rigs because they need to haul stuff like big packs of TP, which I realize might be a personal thing on my part. As far as cargo space, X3 does just fine. Nine packs of TP is average in class. The base price is 38 grand, but who drives a stripped BMW? This one is optioned up to $44,000. To soften that, BMW pays for all of the maintenance for four years or 50,000 miles. The X3 does all of the things other crossovers do. It just has a little bit more fun doing it. That's my take on the second generation BMW X3. There is a model with a larger engine. I talk about that in the written review at drivencarreviews.com, where you will also find a longer version of this video, as always. I'm Tom Volk.